part-time custodian for the town that I live in, and I only work when I'm needed. I have pretty much worked at every school in the district, including the middle school that I attended. It's a fairly old school, built in the early 60s, and is actually being torn down in about a year to make room for the new middle school that will be replacing it. I love that school, and I never want to see it go, but it's kind of a dump. But every time I get the opportunity to go back and work there again, I always accept it. I have always been a firm believer in ghosts, and I've had a handful of experiences, but I've never experienced anything at that building before. Until last winter. I was working a three-night stint at the old middle school on the second floor, from about 2pm to 9pm. Quite frankly, I didn't need seven hours to go about the nightly routine of cleaning, but I was fine with that. On the first night, I went about my business knowing I could pace myself, but I was still flying through my work. I'm not overly social when I work night shifts. I actually like them better because most people are gone by 5pm, and I can just have my headphones in and listen to music, podcasts, or whatever. It was probably about 5 p.m. when I was sweeping the classroom floors in the science wing. All of the doors were shut and locked, which is mandatory in the science wing, with the lights shut off in the rooms, meaning that all the teachers had gone home for the night. Now this detail is important. I have a system when it comes to cleaning rooms, and it's very simple. When I've done everything that needs to be done in a room, I shut the lights off in that room, but when I know that I have to go back into a room for whatever reason, whether it be a stain on the floor that needs to be mopped or a rug that needs to be vacuumed, I leave the lights on in that room as a reminder to circle back at some point. There was one room in that wing that needed a wet mop pretty badly, so I left the lights on and the door open, and I figured that when I was cleaning the bathroom floors in that wing later on, I would make a stop in that room and give it a quick mop. At this point, it's probably about 7 p.m., and I've just finished taking a break with my coworker Jeff, who works on the first floor. I go upstairs to my closet and gather my bathroom cleaning supplies. About 30 minutes later, I make my way back to the science wing to clean the bathrooms and that classroom floor. When I get down to the classroom, I notice that not only is the door shut with the lights off, but the door is locked. Now I know this wasn't me. I never close the classroom doors until I go around to shut the hallway lights off at the very end of the night, just in case I need to go back into a room. I'm also positive that no teachers were left in the building. I unlock the door and the lights are flipped in the off position, so I flip them back on. I immediately ran downstairs to ask Jeff if he had been in the science wing at all in the last hour, and he said no. I asked if there had been any teachers meeting in the main office or the teacher's lounge, and the answer was also no. I told him what happened, and he wasn't surprised at all, saying he thinks that building is haunted. We talked for another minute or two, and I went back upstairs to the classroom. And what do you know, the lights are off again. I always try to debunk every experience that I have, but I cannot for the life of me think of anything that would have caused these things to happen. It was the middle of December, and the building was always cold, so there were no windows open, and I made sure of that. I have no explanations for the light flipping off twice, and no explanation for the door locking on its own. I walk around the entire upstairs, looking in every classroom, trying to find any sign that some teachers could have still been in the building, but I found nothing. I went back to mop the classroom floor and finished the rest of my work for the night. Night two was uneventful, but night three, in my opinion, was the most eventful. The whole night I had this feeling of somebody watching me, and not your normal feeling of being watched, but more like I was being followed, especially once all of the faculty and students were gone. One could normally chalk this up to paranoia but this feeling only worsened. 
I thought I heard footsteps around me a few times. Not heavy footsteps. They were more like light shuffling. I ended up back at the science wing bathrooms. Now these bathrooms are faculty only, and the doors are always shut. They both open just simply by pushing on the door, no knobs or levers to turn, but the women's room on the left doesn't normally shut all the way. It stays propped open on its own about half an inch, unless you forcefully pull it all the way closed. I always start with the men's room on the right. I go in and out of the boys room a few times to grab things off my cart. At one point, I open the boys room door and take two or three steps in when suddenly the door to the girls' room slams shut. It wasn't just a normal slam. This was loud to the point where I jumped, and I don't scare easily. I go back into the hall and the door is all the way shut. I open the door to the girls' room, certain that nobody's actually in there, but just to be safe, I do my normal, hello, is anyone in there? Custodial needs to come in, with the door just cracked open no response. I open the door fully and both stalls are open and there's nobody inside. I lean back into the hallway and I shout for Jeff, thinking that he's somehow pulling a prank on me, slamming the door and then running into a nearby classroom or something. But then it occurred to me, these bathrooms are pretty far removed from any classrooms in both directions. If it was Jeff or a kid or anybody playing a prank, I would have seen them. A few seconds after shouting to whoever may have been listening, I swear I heard faint whispers. The problem was, I couldn't tell which direction they were coming from. It was like they were all around me. I asked them to speak up, and they suddenly went silent. I must have spent ten minutes playing with that door, trying to figure out what could have caused it to slam so hard. There are no windows that could have blown it shut and the only vent in the room is on the other side of the room, and it doesn't blow hard enough to move the door with that kind of force, if at all. I quickly finished my work in the bathrooms, and I swept the hallway floors so I could finish up for the night. Once I was finished, I took one final walk around to shut off any classroom lights and lock any doors that might have been left open. I also went to shut off the hallway lights. While doing this, I made sure that I did not have my headphones in. If something wanted my attention, I was going to make sure they got it. Nothing happened while I made my final rounds upstairs, so I went downstairs to find Jeff. I asked him about the bathroom door slamming and where he was around that time. He told me he was in the sixth grade classrooms by the kitchen, which is on the first floor and on the opposite side of the building. He also said that he had never experienced the bathroom door do anything weird before, but then again, he never really worked in the upstairs wings before. I walked with Jeff, talking to him about random stuff as he went around shutting off the lights. It's probably around 9.15 at this point. Yes, we were there a little late at this point, but we didn't really mind. As we made our way down near the music wing, Something urged me to look back down the hall from which we'd come, so I did just that. I turned to look, and I still get chills and smile like a madman when I think about what I saw. I saw a dark gray transparent figure, shaped like a person, walking from left to right down the hall toward the gym. I immediately start running down the hall to try to see it again but I played it off to Jeff like I thought I saw a real person and was going to direct them out of the building. But I know what I saw. There were no people in the building. There were no basketball practices, no extracurriculars going on that late, and there should have been absolutely nobody else in the building at all. I turn the corner and I don't see anybody. I check all the bathrooms and there's no one. I checked farther down the hall around the corner and there was nothing. I looked outside to the front plaza, but there wasn't a soul. No people, no cars, nothing. At this point, I honestly got teary-eyed, but not because I was upset or scared, because I was happy. 
To that point in my life, those were the most intense experiences I had ever had with the paranormal. I firmly believed that someone was trying to contact me over those three days. Jeff and I finished up and went home. I have since been back to that school a handful of times, but unfortunately, I have never had any truly great experiences like I did those three nights, other than the shadows that we all sometimes see out of the corners of our eyes, but who really knows for sure if those are spirits. They were nothing like the walking figure that I saw, so I chalked them up to my mind playing tricks on me. But like I said, who could be sure? The woman who normally works the upstairs wing of that school doesn't believe my stories. She's worked there for 11 years and says she's never experienced anything in that building before. But she's also one of the most closed-minded people I've ever met. She doesn't believe in ghosts and won't even ponder the idea of aliens or life outside of our planet. She says that I only saw what I wanted to see and that my experience was what I wanted to experience. Quite frankly, I think that's bull. My theory is that since I was clearly interested in what the spirit or spirits were doing, given that I would spend significant amounts of time trying to debunk my experiences, they tried to keep my attention. Almost like they were all starved for attention. I also think it's possible that since I was in a middle school, the spirit or spirits may have been those of middle school aged kids and they were probably just doing juvenile pranks to mess with me. When I called for the voices I was hearing, they went silent. Kind of like how students sometimes do when they get yelled at for talking during a test or something. It's all a theory, but I think those ideas make sense, and I hope that they make sense to whoever's hearing this. I know these aren't the scariest encounters, but they're very near and dear to me. Like I said, I've always believed in ghosts, and I've had some smaller encounters with what I believe were ghosts. But up until that point in my life, those were the most intense encounters I'd ever had. I've had some more encounters recently, some at another school that I believe is haunted. And maybe I'll tell those stories sometime. But for now, I'll leave it here. This happened to me when I was in the fourth grade. I moved into a new school. Someone once said to me that the stairs in that school were haunted. The story goes that one day some students were going down the stairs when they got pushed. A teacher just walked by and asked, what happened, who pushed you? And at that exact moment, the teacher herself got pushed. Another story goes that this particular ghost was running around the hallway during assembly. Also, this ghost apparently had no arms or legs. I asked other people if this was true, and they said that it was. So I got curious, and I decided to check it out with one of my friends at break. So to get to this supposedly haunted staircase, you had to go through a door. In front of that door is another door. Open that door, and the stairs are right there. My friends and I opened the first door, and were about to open the second. But then I saw something, a shadowy figure that seemed to have no arms. My friend saw it too, so we ran out the back door to the playground. Now you might say that it could have just been a shadow of someone else, but the figure was standing right in the middle of the stairs, not against a wall or anything like that. I never used those stairs again unless I was walking with a teacher or a group of people. To this day, I still wonder if I imagined it or if that thing was really there. I started going to a new school in the second grade. The cafeteria was downstairs in the basement, and then there was a long, empty hallway that led to the two bathrooms. I remember the first time I went to the bathroom there. Nobody told me it was haunted, so on the first day of second grade, I ventured down the hall to go to the bathroom. As I made my way toward it, I kept hearing this noise. It was like, ooh, ooh, 
over and over. When I approached the doorway, so much negative energy hit me that I knew not to go in there. I ran back to the cafeteria, told some girls about it, and they were like, oh yeah, it's haunted. We were all terrified of this bathroom. The boys said that their bathroom was fine, but that the girls' bathroom down there also freaked them out, even to be near it. It got so bad that we had to have the principal come and talk to our class about it. Everyone knew it was haunted. Flash forward to third grade. It was Halloween, and I was the first student in the classroom. Every Halloween, we had a parade outside where we would all march around in our costumes. I began putting my costume on over my clothes and I noticed a piece of paper folded up on my desk. It caught my eye. I don't know how to describe it, but it was folded strangely. I picked it up, unfolded it, and in a faint handwriting was, if you dare go to the bathrooms downstairs, I'll kill you. I can't make this up. I was the first student in the classroom. The previous day, I had left school in line with everyone else. Once more kids came into the classroom, I told my friends and they were more scared than I was. They made me tell the teacher. You could tell that she thought it was odd, but she crumpled up the paper and threw it away. And that's the last time I saw it. I went in the bathroom again, but only in large groups. We used to have a thing called field day where we played outside all day at the end of the school year. One day on a field day, about 10 other girls and I had to go to the bathroom. So we all teamed up and went to the one downstairs. I remember leaning up against the wall and feeling and hearing something. It was like somebody was banging on the wall with an ax. We all heard it and it was uncomfortably loud. I also have to add that no one ever went into the last stall, but this day a girl did. I mean, it had cobwebs all over it and everything. Literally nobody would use it. Then one night I was at the school for a concert. This was toward the end of fifth grade, so I was brave enough to go there by myself. I was kind of curious. I went down to the hall and as usual, that whoa, sound could be heard a mile away. I went into the bathroom, but I just kind of stood around. I didn't actually go into a stall or anything. Suddenly, I just got scared and I ran toward the door, but I was rather surprised when I bumped into a strange lady with long gray hair, a scarf partially covering her head and face. I just brushed by her and ran. Also, the lights have turned off when I was in that bathroom. The energy in there is just insane. You just feel in danger. Girls would cry and sob because they didn't want to have to use that bathroom. The loud, overwhelming sound and the occasional banging noises, that unused last stall, the scratches on the mirror, the old poster on the wall, all of it was just creepy. That note might have been a prank, but that bathroom is haunted. I remember when I was a kid that every school was built over a cemetery. It was cliche. But my elementary school actually was built over one. Ever since I was a little girl, I was heavily interested in the paranormal, and I always thought my school had something weird going on. For some reason, I was invested in proving to myself that I was right. In the fourth grade, my experiments began. I purposefully stayed later in my classroom, hoping something would happen. I was always alone for like 10 minutes every day in the classroom, and I waited for like five minutes in silence to hear something. I was slowly getting frustrated and decided to drop my experiments. But one day, it happened. I was alone in my classroom putting some things away in my locker space as quickly as possible so I could join my friends on the patio. My classroom was at the end of the hallway on the second floor, so I was rushing to catch up. I could hear the muffled voices of the other kids outside. 
In one instant, it was like a crowd of people talking out loud just hit me in the ears. I couldn't understand a bit of what they were saying, but it was loud. Louder than a bunch of kids playing outside. I grabbed my backpack and ran outside. When I was just by the stairs, I closed my backpack and walked to meet my friends. I was freaked out, but I didn't say anything to anybody. I didn't want a bunch of other kids to stay late in the classroom with me, and if someone told a teacher, they would think I was doing it for attention. Some weeks passed and I wasn't staying late anymore, because I didn't want to hear those voices again. One day, I thought it would be interesting to leave a piece of paper with a message for the ghosts hidden behind my books. I made sure nobody was there and that nobody could see it in plain sight. Sure enough, I received answers written on the paper. They were simple sentences, yes or no answers. Since my mom was a teacher at my school, I was the first kid to arrive at the classroom before anybody else would come in. I would open my message and I would see the answer. Eventually I stopped doing that because something about it just felt wrong and I could tell that the ghosts or whatever they were were getting a bit annoyed. It wasn't much, but it was enough that it made me believe in ghosts and made me think that I was as awesome as the ghost hunters on TV. I had to do my practice in my school as a librarian for three months. Every morning, I used to sweep and mop the library floor and then start to arrange the books on the shelves. Then I would key in all of the new book entries on the computer. I had the habit of bringing a bottle of holy water with me and I would place it on the table where I sit. Since it was the major exam month, the library would be lonely as the students and the teachers would be going back from school to their houses after one paper that day. Only some students and teachers would come to the library to study and borrow books. Most of the time though, I would be alone in the library, so I would play some music as I arranged the books on the shelves. One day, as I was taking the log books out from the drawer, I accidentally spilled some holy water on the floor. To my shock, that area started to smoke a little. Although it was hard to see with the naked eye, I sensed that something was amiss in the library that day. As soon as I got up, in shock, the media room doorknob behind me started to twist and turn frantically. I stood in my place and looked over the counter to check if someone was there. I saw a shadow at the bottom of the door. I rushed out of the library and walked over to the media room which was just next door to the library, and turned the doorknob slowly. It was locked. No one could have been in there. So whose shadow did I see? This one day, I had a really weird experience by a school. I spent the beginning of that day at the rundown school's basketball court. Everything about it was odd, but fun. I was enjoying myself and I was new to the city and so my neighbor and I were just walking around. You know that saying time flies when you're having fun? Well, that's exactly what it was. Due to my home life, it was easy for me to pick up on the vibe of the area. And when it changed, it got dark really fast. The vibe of that basketball court went from fun and happy to, I guess the right word would be sinister. Like the air itself was heavier. My neighbor called my name and I walked over. He was trying to introduce me to some group of guys. But before I got over there, I've already peeped out that he's nervous. The guy that's doing all of the talking is trying to tell me how the area worked and how the groups were and how you had to belong somewhere and had to prove yourself. He gives us this ultimatum and said that my neighbor and I had to fight and that whoever won basically would have a chance to try out for this group and no wasn't an option. I was nervous and scared, but I was surrounded and I didn't know what to do. 
Anywhere that I could have run, I would have been cut off by someone. The only thing that my mind could think of was that I needed help. They walked us to the school at gunpoint, and this whole time, this guy is in a full-on monologue. Now, we're by some lockers, and we were cut off with no exit, when all of us heard this growling, loud growling. A very large dog, about the size of a Great Dane, came out from the dark area of the hallway we were in. There was really no way it could have gotten over there that I could see. At first, these guys were acting like gangsters, but they were terrified of the dog. And if I thought the air was heavy at first, it felt like gravity was absolutely weighing me down now. Everything stunk all of a sudden. I couldn't move. I was just standing there. And it seemed like everybody was now standing behind me and this dog had come up beside me. I couldn't see it very well. My eyes were blurry from tears. When it jumped, the two guys with guns started shooting. Only thing I could think to do was fall and get up and run. I thought I was shot, so I'm running through this wooded area, but I was too afraid to stop because I thought I'd die if I did. I made it home, and my shirt and pants had blood on it, but it wasn't mine. I stayed in the house for a couple of weeks, hiding, expecting police to come and question me. I told my dad, but he didn't care. About the third week, that same neighbor and his mom knocked on the door. He came to apologize and told me that it was a setup. His leg and chest and arm were bandaged, and he said it was the dog. The guy that had done all the talking had passed away. Both he and the other person with the gun shot at each other. The dog did the rest. The dog caught up with him while he was running through the wooded area, after me. He said he was asking for forgiveness because he couldn't sleep, that every time he tried he could hear that dog growling, and he was afraid to walk outside because he could hear it. We never spoke again after that day, obviously, no matter how many classes we had together. I found out later that year that the school we were at was abandoned and was widely considered haunted by the locals. I went there on the regular to see the dog often. It was really the only place that I could get peace from home and the rest of the world. Never got too close to it, but I never really felt like I was in danger either. After all, that dog saved my life. I live about a mile or two from an old abandoned school that is very haunted. I've heard a few stories about it, and I have an experience there that I would like to share with you. It's a relatively short story, but it freaked me the hell out. I pass this school every time I drive home from work at night, and one night I got home pretty late, like around midnight. Anyway, I was passing the school, and there was a dead cat in the road. I turned around and pulled over in front of the intersection, directly across from the school. I had a friend with me, and we'll call him Chance. We got out of my truck and examined the body of the cat. As I was walking over, I looked up at the school just for a look, just seeing if I saw anything because of how late it was. I didn't, and we continued on to the cat. What we saw was pretty gruesome, I'll spare you. But I went back to my truck and grabbed some wipes I had tucked behind the front seat. It's a single cab, so I put things back there that I don't always need up front. Anyway, I put a few in the palms of my hands, completely covering them, so that I could safely pick up the cat and move it to some bushes to the left of the intersection. Chance and I walked back to the truck without glancing at the school a second time, until we were back in the truck putting on our seatbelts, in shock because of what we'd just seen. But it gets worse. I glanced at the school one more time before putting it in drive, and there was a man and a woman standing directly in front of the school, just standing there, staring at the school while holding hands. Chance is looking at his phone, so I tap his shoulder to get his attention. I say to him, bro, look. 
and we just freeze for a second. I didn't see them at all when I glanced at the school before, and I would have at least seen them walking toward the front of the school when I had first walked over to the cat. The school's pretty wide, and it takes a minute to get to where this couple was standing. They just appeared out of thin air. Once that hit me, I put it in drive and drove up the road to the point where I could turn around and start heading home. Creeping by the school intersection, we looked to see if they were still there and they were. As we passed the intersection, the man turned around quickly and stared directly at us. I have never floored my truck as hard as I did that night. I actually spun the tires when I took off. We made it back home in no time and pulled into the driveway and just sat there for a minute, contemplating what we'd just seen. Eventually, we got our wits together and went in and Chance asked if he could just stay the night, and I agreed. I didn't want to go past that school again, so I didn't want him to. This happened over a month ago. Chance and I have had a falling out, and I haven't had any more experiences driving past that school. But that incident still messes with me to this day. I currently go to school at a private school, and it's split into two buildings. One is an old train station, and the second building was a paper press building or something like that. My school buildings are very old. They were made in the late 1800s to early 1900s. The owner of the paper press building had a brother, and a few years before the school opened in 2012, he had gone into the elevator, and the elevator had fallen, and he died. When the other building was still a train station, two people had died from the train. One was a side, and the other was an accident. This is my first year at this school, and I'm currently in the ninth grade. I always have to go into school around an hour earlier than school starts because of my mom's work. There's only one teacher there when I arrive at school, and every single morning, I always hear a tapping on the window. At first, I thought it was a tree, but then I realized there aren't any trees around the windows. One night I was at my friend's house, who lives about a mile from our school, and at two to three in the morning, we decided to go for a walk. We went to the school because we had nowhere else to go. We were just sitting at the table behind the school, and all of a sudden, every window that we could see had a banging sound coming from it. This was enough for us to run home and to not look back. In the paper press building, Sometimes if I'm there in the morning, I'll hear an elevator moving, then the door opening, and then footsteps coming from upstairs coming down. Upstairs used to be a bowling alley, and I was there with my teacher catching up on work, and we both heard bowling ball bangs and rolling around. There's nothing up there now anymore, besides really nice floors. I think it's safe to say that my school is definitely haunted. The high school I attended was said to be haunted by a girl who had been pushed off of the bell tower and broke her neck, causing her to pass away instantly as she hit the ground. Before it was turned into a modern day high school, I believe it was an all girls boarding school. Strangely enough, I can't find a lot of information on the building. It would have been a boarding school around the time when this unfortunate event happened. There were a few small stories circulating about the school being haunted, but alas, they could have been rumors completely made up. However, I had an experience of my own that made me believe them. I'll start with one of the stories that I heard from others. Either a teacher or a student, I forget which, needed a guide dog or a therapy dog, which they would bring to the school with them. However, the dog would refuse to go anywhere near the stairwell which led to the bell tower. It would whine and try to back up, and it just wouldn't go toward the bottom end of the second floor, the ICT corridor, which is where the doors led out to the stairwell. It's also where I had my own experience. 
I'd also like to add that there is no longer a bell in the bell tower. It wasn't there when I first started at the school, and it's still not there to this day. I believe it was removed and the door leading up to it was sealed shut, meaning that even if we ascended the stairs to it, we wouldn't be able to get much farther than that. Now, onto my experience. It was lunchtime, and I had taken a shortcut through the math corridor, turning right into the ICT corridor on the second floor, toward the door that leads to that stairwell. One set of stairs led down to a small foyer, and the canteen on the right, and the other set of stairs led up toward the sealed-off bell tower. As I was walking along the ICT corridor, I realized that it was awfully quiet. No one was around, no teachers or students whatsoever. It was so quiet it made my ears ring. A set of footsteps joined me and were walking behind me, about halfway down along the corridor. I thought it must have been another student, so I didn't bother turning around to see who it was. I just wanted to get to lunch. I got to the doors, which are big, heavy wooden doors that don't stay open on their own. They have to be pushed with quite a bit of force and latched onto a heavy-duty magnet that holds them open, unless you press a button to release them. The amount of times I was smacked in the face by these things is astounding. So I get to the doors and I push one of them open, not bothering to latch it to the magnet on the wall, thinking that the person walking behind me will just catch it as I let go and walk through it down to the canteen for lunch too. As I began walking down the set of stairs to the canteen, I suddenly stopped mid-step. Something didn't feel right. I realized the doors hadn't made the noise that they do when they slam shut, and the footsteps had stopped at the door. I waited for someone to pass me on the stairs, but nobody did. So I turn around slowly, and the door that I walked through is stood open on its own, without being latched onto the magnet. It was ajar, far enough open that I could see down the corridor, but not quite far enough for it to catch the magnet and stay open. And the student that I was sure was walking behind me was nowhere to be seen, even though I would have sworn up and down that they were right behind me. Their footsteps weren't that far away. Before I could even gasp, the door shuts, slowly, as if somebody was holding it open and then slowly and gently shut it so it wouldn't make a noise. I couldn't get out of there fast enough. I turned and ran down the rest of the steps. I never took that shortcut alone again, and I always made sure I went the long way around if no one was with me. What was even weirder to me was the fact that it felt like somebody was watching me during this whole event. It was so creepy. I work at one of my local schools. I was grading papers and posting the grades late in the evening, since they had been due the night before. The custodians stopped by my room before they left for the day to wish me a good night and safe travels home, so I knew that was going to be the last person in the building, aside from the security who stays at the guardhouse outside the gate. I continued grading as normal, and after about 40 minutes, I began to hear odd noises, Nearby my classroom is an elevator, and when my classroom door is open, I can hear the ding when the elevator arrives to my floor. As I graded, I continuously heard the elevator doors open and close, as well as it shifting from floor to floor. I assumed the custodians were doing one last inspection of the classrooms, so I wasn't really that concerned. I began to get suspicious when this kept occurring, because A, there are only two floors, and B, the custodians would not need to keep traveling up and down for inspections. Sure enough, I stepped outside of my classroom and I saw that the hallway was completely empty. I checked down the hall, just to make sure, to look inside of the other classrooms, and I found that I was indeed alone. I figured they were downstairs, so I went back to my room to continue grading. About half an hour later, I heard giggling and a cart being pushed down the hall. I felt relieved at that time, 
because I thought that I was right and that it was just the custodian still at work. Since it's a very short haul, I figured that when they passed by my room, I would laugh and tell them about how the elevator had spooked me. The rolling continued, but they never came. A solid minute or two passed, and I could still hear the rolling of this cart. I got up to see where they were in the hall, but the moment I got up, the rolling sound ceased. I briskly walked to the hallway to find that, again, it was empty. I felt a pit in my stomach and decided to go home. I packed my things and headed downstairs, hoping to see the custodians on the lower floor. It was empty as well. Trying to muster up all hope and courage, I began walking through the dark campus toward the parking lot. A part of me was praying that I would see their cars out in the lot, but my suspicions were confirmed when I found that my car was the only one left on campus. Of course, I drove as fast as I could to the gate, but I found that it was locked. I got down and knocked on the door of the guardhouse, but nobody answered. I looked inside. It was empty. It turned out that everyone left at around 10 or 10.30, so I was truly the only person on campus. I actually had to call the principal to open the gates for me. I know this sounds made up, but I can assure you that it's real, and it definitely freaked me out. Part of my mom's job is that she works in a school. She works with kids who have special needs. The preschool she works at is kind of notorious for being haunted. She told me that's what her coworkers would tell her from time to time. My mom has some experience when it comes to this kind of thing. Anyway, I decided I would share some of the things that happened at that school during the couple of years that she was there. She said that from time to time, somebody would knock on the door. She said she refused every single time to open it herself. She always leaves it unlocked and says that she's inside. Usually it's one of her coworkers, but she says sometimes there will be a knock and she would say, come in, and nothing would happen. In the same room during her lunch break, she and another teacher were on her laptop looking to buy a gift for her husband. I should clarify it's for her coworker's husband and it was her coworker's computer. When they were looking, my mom said something about her coworker's husband, and the computer all of a sudden, on max volume, played a song that mentioned her coworker's husband's first name. It didn't really scare them. My mom told me they kind of laughed it off, and they ended up buying a speaker. Now, this speaker was gifted to said husband, and within the first week, it was thrown out. The story was that her husband had it next to him one day at his job, and out of nowhere, just like the Mac laptop, the speaker played something eerie. I forget exactly what it was, but my mom told me that the speaker wasn't connected to anything at the time and was actually turned off. He threw it out pretty fast, so, so much for a surprise anniversary present. This one morning, the school had a delayed opening during a perfect spring day. They thought some kid had broken into the school and trashed a couple of rooms. The preschool has cameras, and that was the first thing they checked, but sure enough, nobody had broken in. The camera in my mom's room showed chairs being slid out from tables. Then it showed somebody in the room tossing books off the shelves. This was captured sometime during the night. She said that the lights were flickering every once in a while too, and other classrooms had the same thing happen. This one room, I guess, was the staff conference room, and it didn't have any cameras inside. My mom told me that the janitor said when he walked in, all of the chairs were pushed out and facing random directions. There was a police report, but the police couldn't find any solid evidence of a break-in. They suspected that somebody stayed in the building while it was open, and waited until it closed and then pulled some massive prank. The thing that bothers me, though, is that I know teachers lock their classroom doors when they leave. And how would any person have gotten in without tripping an alarm? In any event, we're pretty sure that school is haunted.